funny. Okay, so we can start right now. So the question is, of course, what is le funny? And it's a good question because it will be quite important when we talk about uh, using the French language. So basically, le funny is the idea that we will produce des sons agréable à entendre. So, sounds that will be nice to hear. Okay? Or then, des sons plus faciles à prononcer. Sounds easier to pronounce. And this is the, an important thing when we talk about French language. Uh, it does mean that we will, in some cases, don't respect uh, the grammatical rules just to modify the language to make it whether easier to pronounce or then nicer. Okay, so we'll see in this video uh, the contractions, uh, the liaisons, uh, the inversion, then the special adjectives, the imperative form, and then this long form. Okay, because in all these cases, actually, le phony will have <laughs> uh, actually something to say and something to modify. Okay, so we can start now with les, les contractions. And we've been seeing that uh, quite many times before when we've got this je a form, for instance, we get what we call a hiatus. Okay, so it's a quite difficult word, but that it does mean that you've got two vowels here or two sounds of the vowels that will belong to different syllables okay and so they don't get along and that's the main reason why we will have to modify it we will have to take away this uh here and we'll get this j in the same situation when you get le arbre you get this hiatus and then you will have to take away your uh here just to get this l'arbre form same thing here la ami you take away your A, and then you will get l'ami. And finally, here, je utilise, same situation, sorry. You will have to take away your A, just to get this j'utilise form. Okay, so, j'ai, l'arbre, l'ami, j'utilise. Okay, so just for this reason, you will have to, so the hiatus reason, you will have to take this A. Uh, 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 and then uh, away. All right. So second situation now, and we're talking about les liaisons. Okay. So les liaisons. It's quite important because uh, we tend to make them quite often. I've been making some videos. If you want to uh, watch them, uh, I explain a lot of things regarding the liaison. Okay. But then in this case, we will actually only focus on this euphony aspect. So we get this. Nous avons, okay, so nous avons, and then basically in that case, for, well, aesthetical and then practical reasons, we will make this little link between the two, and we will get nous avons, okay, so nous avons will become nous avons, then vous avez eu will become Vous avez eu. Okay, so you can, you can see that here you get the first liaison and then the second one here. And in the same way, il ont eu will become ils ont eu. Nous avons, vous avez eu, ils ont eu. So let's see now what we call l'inversion. And then you can see here the letter T, okay? So, l'inversion. So, normally, remember, when you construct a sentence, uh, you've got first the verb, uh, sorry, first the subject, then the verb, okay? So, il a. And then, if you want to ask a question, normally, we should change the order and put first, now, first the verb, then the subject, okay? But then, Ah, il looks a bit strange, it sounds a bit strange, and that's the reason why we will have to modify it, and we will add this T here. Okay, so you will get this form, a-t-il. 
All right, so il a should become a il, but then it doesn't sound nice, so it's a-t-il. All right, in the same way, elle parle, so subject verb, we should put that like that, verb subject parle elle, for the same reason, we will put this t between the two, parle-t-elle. Il aime, aime il, will become aime-t-il. Alright, so it's actually quite simple. Huh? If you look carefully, you've got here a vowel, vowel, vowel. Then in these cases, you will have to add this t between the two. Alright, so a-t-il, parle-t-elle, aime-t-il. And of course, it doesn't change if after parle, well, you've got je, uh, or you've got tu, or you've got other persons, because basically they don't start with a vowel, so uh, the problem won't occur, okay? So let's see now what we call special, les adjectifs spéciaux, pardon, special adjectives. And we're talking about only three adjectives, and the first one is beau, beautiful, nice. Un beau homme. So it's actually quite interesting because in this case, beau homme, well, you can see that phonetically it's quite uh, challenging <laughs> to produce. So that's the reason why we will actually, instead of using this beau, use the second version that we have. So it will be belle. So it does mean that this adjective has two masculine forms. So you get beau, and then you will have belle. Okay, so this belle will use for all the words that will come after, starting with the sound of a vowel. And you will get un bel homme. Un bel homme. Okay, so remember I say the sound of a vowel, because of course if you look carefully, you've got H here. Okay, and it's not a vowel at all, but then in French we don't pronounce it. So the first thing that you hear, it's um, um, so it's O, oh, it's the vowel here. And that's the main reason why we will have to use this bel form, okay? So remember, beau masculin, and then bel as well, written like that, masculin. The second adjective that will be modified is nouveau, okay? Un nouveau ordinateur, so you will have to modify nouveau and you will get the second masculine form of nouveau and it's nouvelle, so that you will use for all the words that start with the sound of a vowel. Un nouvel ordinateur. And the last one is vieux, old, un vieux arbre, okay, of course you've got this X at the end, but you don't pronounce it, okay? So it, it's vieux arbre, and then vieux actually will have a second masculine form, and it's vieille, okay? You get un vieil arbre, all right? So un bel homme, un nouvel ordinateur, un vieil arbre. Let's see now the imperative form, so l'impératif. And it's actually quite interesting because l'impératif, if you combine it with le pronom Y, so pronounced I, and then le pronom en, we'll see how it works. Because, for instance, you take the verb aller. Aller is really tricky, uh, so take the time and concentrate now. <laughs> so let's see, aller. Aller, normally at the imperative, should be va, just like that. So we're talking here about the tu person, okay? And then, if you want to combine it with the pronoun i, or y here, then it will become Vasi. And when I spoke about the, the fact that this euphony can actually modify the grammar, uh, you've got a good situation here because basically, even if the form is normally va like that, you will have to modify it and put this s here just to get the sound vasi instead of vai. Okay? Vasi. 
all right so va is tricky because we've got the second example and so as we uh, saw previously it's va okay and then if you combine it with the pronoun en then it will become va-t'en so you will keep the normal form but then you will add this t between the verb and the pronoun va-t'en okay in other situations like penser for instance if you look carefully pense okay and then you want to put the e all right so in that case you will change the grammar as well and you will keep the s that we normally have at the present form okay pense-y pense-y all right so you don't keep the normal imperative form for two but then you will put this s pense-y another example chanter okay chante and then you put en after chanson okay could be chanson une chanson all right so keep in mind that you will have to keep this s z chanson okay to have this link between the two and the last but not the least and it's long okay so let's see oops my l is already there um c plus on so as we saw it will create what we call a hiatus okay and that's the main reason why <laughs> it was here from the start you will have to add this l just to get c long all right so if you say c Mm, well basically we think that it doesn't sound uh, that nice uh, you can hear it honestly you can hear it but still if you want to um, well use the language in a correct way you should definitely add this L between the two just to get this form si long okay si on veut will become si l'on veut si on peut will become si l'on peut si on doit will become si l'on doit okay si l'on veut si l'on peut si l'on doit 